and to your name, Father, we thank you. We thank you, Lord. Good evening, brothers. I want to thank each and every one of you for coming out to another uh, meeting. Kingdom men, as a man thinking in his heart, so is he. Today we're going to be talking about um, a primitive root. A primitive root. And we're going to be basically discussing uh, what God calls and what God sees and what God is expecting out of men. A primitive root. Amen. This is a break off uh, from from one of the groups that we had discussed uh, on last weekend um, at the king's table at the men's um, lunch, and this is actually a break off from that. Uh, we discussed. At that lunch, um, that we make a difference. The difference is the difference we make when we speak out of our mouths. The difference we make when we do an action, or the difference that we make when we influence someone. This is actually a break off from that uh, lunch. Uh, those who have in uh, attended the lunch, um, you may have gotten a couple of free CDs on on many other teachings uh, that Kingdom Men had going on, but we're going to um, move into this one. This one may take a little longer than others because we're going to get a deeper study and, and a deeper understanding of uh, what God calls for men. Uh, men of intelligence, men of, of, of cunning. These are some of the things we're going to be talking about. And we're going to actually use David and, and Solomon, David's son. So we're going to get very deep into, this is just maybe a, a little piece of what we're going to pull out of this. Because it's going to be a very long teaching. Amen? Amen. A primitive root. We are to be wise men. The Bible clearly states that we have to be wise hearted men. That we have to be wise hearted men. Wise hearted men can be in the way we engage every area of our lives. Uh, how we think, how we act, what we do, where we go, what we say. Um, all of these things portray out of a wise-hearted man. Um, what we think about a person. You know, do we have hatred in our heart? Do we have non-forgiveness in our hearts? Um, I know many of, many of the men that I, I spoke to over the years... That they have been through divorces in their lives, and deep in their heart, they still might have something animosity against their ex-wife. But that 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 comes from deep inside the heart. And to be a wise-hearted man, those are some of the things you have to actually give to God. Let it go. Amen. And we have to be a man, men of a wise mind. A wise mind, a wise way of thinking. A wise way of carrying out things. A wise way of speaking to someone. Uh, a wise way of engaging in a circumstance. Not quickly. But looking at the circumstance and judging it on a wise level. Not judging a person, but judging a circumstance or a situation that we are going through. 
And we also have to be wise in our words. Wise in our words. We talked about that and uh, how we can make a difference with our words in the lunch. And wise in our words can actually bring an action behind it. When we speak out of our words, eventually the action is going to come behind it. So we have to be wise in words and in action. Amen? A man of intelligence. When the Spirit of God is in us, it brings forth intelligence. We have to be a man of skillful and artful. We have to be skillful in how we portray ourselves. We have to be skillful, skill, skillful in the things that we do. We have to be skillful in how we conduct ourselves in and around and among people. Amen. We have to be cunning. The Bible talks about a cunning man. And we're going to get deep into that word cunning. Because that word cunning can go a long, long way. This man has to be exceedingly. Exceedingly. He has to be constant in what he does. And he has to be able to know how to teach wisdom. Teach wisdom to the young. Teach wisdom to the old. Teach wisdom to your children. Teach wisdom to your spouse, your wife. Teach wisdom to the men that you work around. Teach wisdom to the men that you apply yourselves on a day-to-day -day basis. Teach wisdom. A man that can teach wisdom. I believe that's a beautiful thing. Because when the Spirit of God is in you, the Holy Spirit is in you, the Holy Spirit brings forth many things. The Holy Spirit brings forth a man of intelligence. The Holy Spirit brings forth men, a, a man of skillfulness. A man that's cunning. A man that is teachable. A man that can be teached. A man that can teach wisdom. The Holy Spirit, when it comes in someone, it develops a... Uh, what we call an inner being of who you are. It actually creates who you are from the inside. And as it, cre as it creates who you are from the inside, it will actually be seen on the outward parts of you. We talked about that in the last series of the last series that was um, uh, Fatherhood is Priceless. We talked about the inner and the outer effects of a man. When the spirit of God is in them. Amen. Amen. God is looking for a cunning man. We're going to use that word cunning. What can we say that word cunning is, brothers? I believe a cunning man is a man of reputation. A man of reputation. But when we look at that role, that word reputation, we can that can go both ways. It can go a negative, and it can go a positive way. But right now we're going to discuss a man of positive reputation. A man that knows who he is. Very important. A man that knows who he is. And a man that knows whose he is. I, re I, I believe that many men fail in their lives because they don't know who they are.